Hello and welcome into the So Red Data Football Strategy Show. I'm Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on So Rare Laughing already because joining me along with PSU fans too is Haber. Haber is someone I have honestly, it's my own fault for taking so long to have him on. So firstly, Haber, my apologies for taking so long. And secondly, thank you so much for joining us. It's okay. I took the dartboard with your face down, so it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> That thing got a lot of you use. You actually though. take it down, or is it just on like a different wall? That I, I just re I just replaced the face. Ooh, oh. we'll dive yeah. into who the face is uh, as we move on. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us. There was who is it? Pico play here. This is the trio I've been waiting for, and it's also a champion Europe discussion. I was giving Haber a bit of a hard time today just before because we had him on for a champion Europe discussion. Sean was telling me the two of them were talking about the champion Europe plans. He was like, this is, should be a show. And I was like, let's do it. And all I see are challenger Europe acquisitions in the it's Haber Sorer gallery. So Haber, you'll have to explain some of that as well. Um, That's Sean's fault. I'll be honest with you. It's Sean's fault. I don't think anything's my fault. I sit there. So for those that are unaware, Haber was on vacation for two weeks and like, I will speak for, I think everyone when you're on vacation, your so rare plans get brought down a little bit. No matter who you are, me, me included, like it's you miss some things that you wouldn't have missed in your normal day to day life. But this dude is on vacation and he comes back, Laird, and he just sent me a list of like everyone he's buying. I'm like, so you literally are buying the entire Saudi league, is what you're doing. <laughs> Every single player on this list for like four days. He's like, man, I'm buying Odysseus and Malcolm. I'm like, do you like look at anything? He's like, oh, I was on vacation. I'm going to get back on track. Yeah, he's like, dude, the price alerts have been popping. Yeah. So anyways, it was literally like for like three, four days when he got back. He's like, and and to be fair, Larry, you'll be impressed. I was actually nice about it. I was just like, I, I, I said, I'm like, no, look, this is, this is honestly pathetic. Figure shit out. And then get back to it but i was nice about it i was like i'm not gonna berate you and say how dumb you are right now i'm just going to give you an overall view of like look at the transfer rumors on anybody you're looking at and then come back to me uh, uh nice is a word that i don't know if that necessarily applies to anything psu has ever said to me in his entire life I, I'll um, I, I, I would know. say I would say not as harsh is is how I would describe it, but that's not the same as being nice. you nice. you were sarcastic, you were blunt, you were condescending. Nice. That's no, no, no. Nice. All I, all all I got was I sent I sent like I called players, and all I got was a lull, and then like no reply for like fifteen minutes, and I'm just sat there like, <laughs> what does this mean? What am I, like? Ugh. I'm like and, I was cooking, I was making a sandwich right and I was on my phone and I just got I just got a lull I'm just like okay left my phone unlocked ten minutes later it's locked again there's no message on I'm just like what what does this mean that either that meant, means one of two things I went to take a shower or I was also cooking food but that that's that's pretty much what that means I like how the absence of like harshness is niceness yeah not necessarily yeah. being nice just not was, being. I was nicely condescending, nicely blunt, and nicely honest. Like, uh, all of those were very nicely done by me. Well, we'll dive into some of that in a little bit. Uh, I, before I get any further, I'm going to tell everyone, if they have not already gone to It's Haber So Rare on YouTube, go over there and subscribe to his channel. That's me! That's, That's me! Haber, right there. I don't know why I was pointing in a weird way. Haber does some really great content that he thought of all on his own, like doing gallery reviews and videos about how much he made on SoRare. They're highly entertaining and extremely helpful. So please go over there. And also, it's Haber SoRare on Twitter as well. Follow all of us. Put my smart guy glasses on real quick for this. Ooh. I am an intelligent man and deserve, deserve all of the compliments. If there's definitely someone I want to give me a gallery review, you are definitely <laughs> a person. I can think of someone worse than me. Well, I can think of a lot of people worse than you. <laughs> but but you're definitely a person in that list. So was that Look, something was that something nice that you just said? Or was that Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah, you see what I mean? It was nice. There are people okay. worse than him. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. That's not a compliment. That's just that's just not an insult. <laughs> I think it's a compliment. I'm saying there's people worse than you. It's like you, there are people that I would be like, wow, this person is worse than Haber. I, I didn't even say there are people that are better than you. I thought it. I didn't say it. But no, but you implied people. it. Implying it is the same thing as basically saying it. Yeah, no. Germ, germ says that it's up for interpretation. I exactly. think I've been very nice and 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 lovely at all times. Objection. <laughs> to be to be fair, the stuff he was saying was incredibly stupid. Larry. You would have been like. It was wow. stupid given context, all right? But I just got back from two weeks of checking nothing. So it made sense two weeks ago before all these links happened. I didn't know that the Saudi PFA were going to buy mm. everything. Literally, his list, like his list was. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Joe. Joe Deuce, he Deuce, said back in the compliments still have the word compliment in them. Thank you. I, that's, that's how I view it. I believe that is exactly something that Sean would believe. That is something I believe. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, mm. Mm -hmm. Well, we can move on from that, I think. Let's talk about Champion Europe here. Haber, you came into So Rare hot. Awfully. But, but a lot of it was with like elite, like Champion Europe players. And like all of us could have sold them for a lot, but had way too much fun losing, I mean, playing the game that mm -hmm. we kept all of our cards. But at some point you, you did branch out, but was the draw, was the champion Europe kind of push when you started? Because like, I know all of these guys, like you, I think you have like a deeper player knowledge base than a lot of people just from like your own, like FIFA background. But I assume it's like a lot of people, like the champ, the big five European leagues are where you know the most. And so you like dove in there. And was that just the reason? Like, you know, those leagues the best. Uh, it was mainly due to FIFA, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't even buy elite cards on Sora. I bought people that were good on FIFA, essentially. What I did was I looked at players that got a lot of informs and thought, well, they're getting inform for playing well. Clearly, they're going to play well in Sora. Um, in fact, it took me two months to actually get Sora data, like to actually start using Sora data. And it was free back then as well. It took me two yeah. months to start using it. I just used Sora, looked at their L5 on Sora, did no research and lost a lot of money in the process. Um, which obviously going back now, it would have been nice not to do that, but that, you know, that that's behind us. Um, but yeah, I just bought FIFA, FIFA players, essentially. I didn't even, and they weren't even necessarily good on so rare. I bought like Kimpembe. Kimpembe was not good on so rare. I bought, um, who else did I buy? Ben Yedder. He's not bad, but like on FIFA, he's a lot better than he is on, on so sure. rare. So, and I, and I lost a lot in the process doing it as well. I mean, I think that's just kind of the price for learning so rare. Yes, but the, the difference is, right, the price of learning so rare combined with the price of getting in when Ethereum was at its all-time high, combined with the price of the market crashing two weeks after I start investing money in, combined with the price of trying to chase that loss by, for some reason, my brain thinking investing more to get my gallery valuation back to where it was is somehow recouping that money yeah it's look we can we can talk about I w i'm a different man from where i was last year let's just say that yeah i could i think you could chalk all of those up to being unlucky oh uh, yeah i blame nepenthes if nepenthes didn't exist i would be like 120 gram richer right now i think but you wouldn't be on sower that is true so, so once again if nepenthes didn't exist i would be i would be a happier man right now I would not have piled so much money into this flipping pyramid scheme that is ruining my life and I'm addicted to it. And that is the truth. We'll have to edit that one out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yes. Sorry, anyway. so rare. Uh, it's Haber, so so I said you... that, not it's Haber. Sorry. Just quickly, quote, quote. <laughs> we're different people. So what's your champion Europe strategy now? Um... <laughs> Would you like so, to share what you think with the rest of the class, Sean? He has... <laughs> some of the ideas were better than others, but his he, he also, for those two funny, funny side notes here to people that don't know, one is similar to something you do. So Haber takes notes now to try to keep his thoughts together so that he can, like, remember stuff. 
which I think is a good idea. I know, Laird, you keep a spreadsheet as well. I was, I was waiting for you to be like, this is a terrible idea. I'm like, why would that be no, bad? No, it's a good idea. If you don't know, if, you, if that helps you keep track of stuff, I think it's a good idea. So anyways, Haber has done that. However, he like probably rips out pages just every second and just like, I just picture him as the person that like rips it out, crumbles it, tosses it in the, in the garbage can, moves on to the next piece of paper. So then the next funny story and i don't know if this is actually true but he told me this I yesterday sorry to cut you off there but i actually picture a header like he crumples it up and he throws it up and he's like this, that, volley. That, half volley that's yeah. understandable so the yeah. other thing he said i told him the other day i'm like hey worst things come to worst if your your plan fails you can just hit the deposit button and i'm like everyone has that ability he's like i don't i coded it out of the platform so i can't deposit <laughs> so i'm gonna assume he was joking but i thought that was pretty funny um so here's the thing Every single Haber plan, and this doesn't matter if it's like Champ Europe, U23, Challenger, D1, whatever his plan ends up being, it always starts out with, I'm going to give away all of my good players to a trader. That is always how it starts. He's like, I'm going to sell all of my good players to a trader and have no depth whatsoever. Then eventually he's like, wow, I have no depth. I literally can't make lineups and then I'm screwed. And then he's like, that sounds like a bad plan. This is how every single plan starts. So, Haber, why don't you tell Laird what your strategy started out with here for Champ Europe? Uh, I I would like to plead the fifth. Isn't that, that only question. an American thing? I right, we you yeah well, that's where we are right now. Yeah, we're... <laughs> for those of you who are unfamiliar, Haber does have some excellent wins. Yes. On so rare, like all my, a, all my losses are on Sean, but all my wins are on me. Yeah, there is a there is a track record of success here. So if you're like relatively new and you're like, why on earth would they have this guy? There, there's. I'm actually yeah. pretty good, kind of. There are some very good cards on his SO5 results page, as I scroll about down and see a Kimmich, which I forgot about. Uh, so well done on that. So, Thank you. but I also think that. For like 99% of so rare users, if you have not had a thought that your new strategy is to get rid of everything and send it to a trader and, and buy something else, then you're not playing right. Right. So for context, and I'll be a bit more serious now, okay? I'm being a bit silly. Um, the, the sending it to a trader... Right. That's come from something I sent to Sean yesterday, which involved me sending like nine or ten players to Pavel for a couple of super rares. And the depth that I I involved in that trade was majority America or goalkeepers, both of which I intend on replacing with other depth, but I hadn't said that in the message. So Sean just eviscerated me on Discord for for uh essentially threatening to send all my depth to Pavel, but it wasn't all my depth, but it seemed like it because the bigger picture wasn't sent in the same, in the same frame. So he didn't get the context that there was going to be more purchases made oh, as well as those two. So it did, so it did make sense, but it didn't, it obviously didn't make sense without context. Um, but in the past I have sent, I have sold to traders before, but that's because I have ADHD. And when I get something in my head, it has to be done on that day. Otherwise I can't do it. And I cannot, wait and i can't go to sleep at night if i don't make the purchase so i will sell it instantly to katose or roadie boss or some other blood-sucking leech i'm joking guys i do love you when i need to sell stuff i will come back um <laughs> but i will sell to those just to get the youth quickly even if i'm taking a big haircut on the cards because especially back then the market was not as liquid as it's getting now so it was really hard to sell a lot of those cards especially super rares and high high level rares that maybe weren't hitting good scores back then and stuff so that was like and and in fairness a lot of the times although i took a haircut back then if i'd have taken the two or three weeks to sell some of these cards might have lost a bit of value so it might not have been as bad as it seemed on the day but I have I have been known to sell to a couple of traders. Uh, and, yeah. I'm going to add something there when it comes to the traders, though, because as far as I know, I don't have ADHD. I might have it for so rare because I have the same issue that like when I think of something, I'm like, I have to do it today. Yeah. And part of it is when one of the traders gets a card you want, there are like vultures around. Yes. And it's like, yeah. you have to yeah. get it first or yeah. else you're just not going to get it. So rushing, like... 
I remember trying to sell a card. I don't even remember what it was, but it like it would not sell. And I traded it to Pavel, I think, or one of them. And he sold it for what I was trying to sell it for like the next day. And like yeah. people, those, those galleries, because people know that they can get cards from them are just more visible. People look at those galleries and they don't necessarily just look at, at the cards that are on the market. And so there is like, I understand completely the need to rush if one of those guys gets a card that you want. I mean, when the bots get a good card, like people don't even want to share it in discord. Cause they're like, wait, I got to get this card before. Like yeah. I don't want to tell other people. So yeah. I, I don't think, not that I don't think Sean doesn't do this because Sean is able to just buy cards that he wants. I don't know who and not who's the most who's the most recent person here that did a trade with with Pavel there. You, uh, Shut I don't up, think you Sean. did a trade with Pavel. I think you bought a card from him, right? I did. I I, I did do a trade today, actually. Oh, never mind, it's Haber. With with, with Pavel, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. It, it's Haber. Do you know but, as well? A little bit of context. Sorry, just to add to what Ledger said. Back in the day, it's, it's different now, but back in the day as well, especially with Pavel, like it was rare he got an actually good card in his gallery. Yeah. Usually he just had crap. So when he did get a good card, it was like, I've got to get that straight away because I can trade him all of my rubbish for that good card. Whereas now he actually ha usually has good cards quite frequently. So it's a bit different now. But back then it was more of a, uh, a rush, I feel like, than it is now. I still feel the the need to Well, yeah, I still feel it as well. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but back like a year ago, it was like, I remember uh, one time Pavel bought some really good gallery and Chani put in the Discord, like adding everyone, quick, quick, Pavel just bought a crazy gallery, some insane deals to be had. And I feel like four or five of us got deals that day. We just rushed in there, swooped up. He had like an Mbappe in there that day. And mm -hmm. we were just like, everyone was just hitting Pavel up that day. Yeah, it, yeah, it happens. It's, well, here's here's the thing too. We'll, we'll touch on a couple uh, a couple of chat questions and comments quickly, and then we'll get back to it. So one, two, three. Zicky Zaki said, "Why am I getting dad vibes from Sean when talking to Haber?" I thought that was pretty pretty accurate. Uh, Haber is well acknowledged as my sower son, so that definitely checks out. Uh, uh, Coley Bucks said that everyone judges uh, Sir Hiss hasn't bought that, that, that for anyone looking to go. You can't buy that one though. That's the oh, one he not. uses to. So, I'm pretty sure you send him a trade, and then he oh. sends it back without it, with how much? Or is no, that? Oh, is that Basil? That's Sorry, Basil. that's Basil. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Take that back. So, Coley Buck said everyone always judges others from trading with Pavel, but everyone does it. So here, here's the thing: True. there are different trades with Pavel, which we'll talk about, and I can use Habers as an example. And, and there are trades that people should be judged for, and trades that are like or like reasonable trades that was fine to do. Uh, and then Rascal, and I agree with this too, traders are fantastic resources that everyone should consider making use of. I think everyone Absolutely. should consider making use of them, but you just got to do it correctly. So a good example of what not to do to a trader. So, and I'm going to use Haber for both examples in the last 24 hours because they fit both examples. The first one is what not to do with the trader. So Haber messaged me a list of guys that he was going to sell to the trader yesterday, Larry. Here's the list, and I'm just gonna get your reaction, and then I'm gonna give the good example. We don't need to go through the list. This is this is privileged information. You've already traded them. I'm, I'm gonna give the ones that you've got. Ready. I only traded one card today. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying I already know how I'm gonna respond to this. But please continue. So Haber sent me a list, and he's like, "I'm gonna send this to Pavel, okay?" And these are the names that he like sent me yesterday. Lars Unterstall Rare. Heard of him? Uh, Did I? Well, I, I mean, I don't know if that was in there, but the other ones were in there, like Alex Merritt. You can't just right. make a name up and then be like, well, I don't know if that was in there or not. So the I'm whole not... idea is that you're sending an actual list with real names, okay. and now you're just All making right. shit up. Okay, names that were actually <laughs> on the list. Mike Mignon. No, he wasn't. Alex Merritt. He wasn't either. Merritt was 100% on the list. No, he wasn't. All right, I have it up right now. Merritt I sold two days ago. I don't even have Merritt anymore. Anyway. I mean, no, not, not anyways. Ago. Not anyways. We can't just make this right. up, right? I, I will read the list. I'm going to read the whole list. <laughs> I got to go back and find it. Sorry, I have a lot. I, of I have it up. Do you know, I can give you the names. I have it up. It was it was Marlon Batarina, Mascara, Aiden Morris, Daniel Shallower, uh, Daniel, the goalkeeper from San Jose, 
Palinio from Atletico Monero, Adan from Sporting, Walter and Gregor Kobel. My bad. I forgot the goal. So like he he named Gregor Kobel instead of Merritt and he named like these other guys instead of he, he like Batterina. Do you know how easy it is to sell Batterina if you have it? Okay. Okay. So let me ask two questions to Haber before I respond, because I know, I still think I know exactly how I'm going to respond. One is, were you looking to sell all of these like for ETH? Yes. Or were you trading them for a card that he had? Oh, sorry. I should have waited for the second question. I was, I was trading these for two cards that Pavel had, um, but all of them are already listed up that I intended on selling regardless. But like you had cards that you were ready to acquire by getting rid of these other cards. Yes. So putting them all on the market and waiting a week to sell them could allow you to lose those cards, meaning lose the cards you want to get. That, like, that's yes. why you sell to a trader. So Correct. like, well, Sean is always like, those are really good cards. They'll sell easily. And it's like, even if it still takes three days, the card yeah. that you want to sell may not sell. But at the price and the value that you're going to get for Gregor Koval, you could just cut the price yourself and get to the floor and sell it. Like two sold, be it, well, I don't know. You can make it happen and not no, lose you enough. Can. Yes, Larry. Yes. Anyways, it's like, anyways. If for context, it's, I've had, it's really 50%. So like you need somebody to, to want to buy that card. Exactly. At that time. And and for context, uh, I sold... Uh, oh, sorry, I had for sale Batarina um, and Cobell for about five days. Hadn't had a single offer that I would have accepted. I, and I've been accepting offers. Like you will see in my transaction page, I've been selling like crazy. And I will accept, you know, a bit under under the floor. I don't mind taking a bit of a haircut because like at the end of the day, you know, taking a 30 to 50 pound loss, other people are gonna do the same thing as well. Like you can get it if, if you're offering liquid ETH, especially for a super rare that's maybe not as liquid, some people are willing to take a bit of a haircut as well. So I don't mind. And I, I feel like I am quite, fair with my price as well but i didn't receive a single offer for batterina or cobell over a five-day period that i would have sold at they were all legit like 100 200 pounds lower and that's too much to, of a loss to take yeah but like I, if you look at batterina batterina had an auction yesterday that went for 0.475 and then someone bought one off of the secondary for 0.465 yesterday so like, I, if i got that 0.65 offer i would have accepted it. i just didn't correct. it just wasn't me that got the offer but that probably means you just weren't aggressively reducing your price enough to get to a point where it would sell which i understand you don't want to do that anyways so the way not to go to a trader is to like get a list of players bulk trade them to the trader for card that the trader likely has overpriced anyways to some extent now however the right way to go to a trader is a move that haber also did today he went and he wanted an actor glue super rare. So he went and he traded. I think an actor glue super rare is probably worth like 0.8 to 0.9 ETH, give or take. And he went and traded Marlin and 0.62 ETH for an actor glue super rare. So like I think he pretty much got actor glue super rare for the value that it was worth, right? So maybe he lost like 3%. I did a similar deal yesterday with Pavel where like I just – am not willing to lose. I've lost like 10 Ethan cards to Saudi league this week. It feels like it feels like I'm just like losing everyone in their mom to the Saudi league. So I was like, Odysseus rumors have started to come out. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this again. And he had a Gaston Brugman super rare that I was like, this card's probably worth like 0.9 to one ETH. And I gave him 0.48 ETH and the, Odysseus, what was like 0.48 ETH was the floor at the time. So I was just like, this is fine. I'm going to get out of it. And whatever. That type of move is fine. The the issue moves are, and I agree with you, Laird. Like if you have a card that you're really trying to get from him, like you not moving quick could be the difference in you getting it and not getting the card. And you need to move quick. But a lot of the people will just sell cards to the trader in giant piles and just get just 40% off. It's like, you can't do that. But like, if you got cards that are movable, even if you take a 20% clip off of like what a floor is, you can make it happen pretty easily. Yeah. I think ultimately, and it's particularly the case with super rares, you just can't wait. You can't afford I, to take I do a 40% haircut and wait a week. And so yeah. like, that's the issue. I think, I think there's some, there's a happy medium in there somewhere. Yeah. I agree. Um, 
but it's just it's, it is difficult i think i think these deals are always context based like and that deal i did today i and i think i've said this to you before sean i don't think marlon is worth 0.3 it's a wild i price. i i cannot like i look at all the other he's i think the most expensive rare defender in america yeah and okay. he's someone that hasn't put up a elite score in five game weeks four game weeks he's someone where i've watched him and i don't understand how he gets those scores in the first place the guy is an anomaly he doesn't get on the ball so for me with with the the links to russia i was like yeah he was one i really wanted to to get off to get rid of to a trader because i don't think anyone's going to buy that card at point three ever again um i think i think you're right. i think he probably deserves to be the most expensive american defender right now but that's more of a indictment on the american defenders i think than a like endorsement of him uh anyway zm star does not like that we are not talking about strategy so we're going to get back to the strategy right now so let's get into the uh plans for champ europe and like where you're at what you're thinking with with what you were doing because you've had multiple ideas over the course of the last i don't know 72 hours first one i actually still liked uh <laughs> I saw uh, that. I was laughing at that. Look, I've been trying to change my name for three months. I'm waiting for the like period. I don't like. I, it, it cringes me out that that's in my name because I don't. <laughs> I don't mind doing trades, but like it was in my name because we went through that really rough, illiquid part of so rare where mm -hmm. nobody wanted to send ETH to anybody, and uh, people only wanted to send cards. And the offers I was getting, like I'm not Pavel, you know. So, but uh, yeah, I do want to take that my name. I was waiting for that period where I can actually take it out. I don't know. I've never heard anyone that has changed their name not regret it after changing it, and then you can't change it for three months. Laird, when was the last time you changed your name? Never. Never, like yeah, I've never, never changed. changed. Never changed my name. Probably will never change my name ever. Yeah, it's it, it. That is a um. That was a that was a mistake and a regret. It happens. So, all right. Anyways, Champ Europe Haber, give us the rundown. What you're thinking about stuff, and then we can we can discuss through things. Okay. So. For, like the baseline is the fact that I got super lucky and the super rare Kim Min Jae I bought last year has got a great transfer to buy Munich. So I'm really happy about that. That's that is, I would say, put me in a really good spot given the fact I already have rare Kimmich to build a nice little buy in stack that isn't necessarily contingent on whether they sign Harry Kane or anything like that. It's just three player or, or the goalie and two players that already have great AA potential. So I went out and bought a Neuer, who I, from all the research I've done, from every Bayern sort of insider, you know, we get we get these like like random people within Sarah that know a lot about a club. Like, so a lot of people I talk that are really close to like Bayern as a club, a lot of fans are very confident Neuer's number one, so long as he doesn't get injured. And I thought 0.37 for, for a Neuer just seems ridiculously cheap if he is going to come back this season, which apparently I, I saw an update yesterday where he's, He's on track to come back at the start of the season. So it was a no-brainer. So I picked up Neuer and I've got that sort of baseline. Um, where it gets interesting is what happens to the Neymar. Because it's I, as the window goes on and the links die, the rumors die for Neymar, I get more excited. Because if Neymar stays, he's probably the best champ Europe forward unless Carrie Kane moves to Bayern. So like that, and even if Harry Kane moves, I don't think he's better than Neymar. So wait. I saw the shaking head. I got the right answer. Um, <laughs> but um, wait, you think he's better? Well, hold on. You I think Neymar's better. Still think Neymar's better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ne Neymar's better. I, Sorry. I think. I think the big, like, the best thing that could happen is Mbappe leaving because then Neymar gets pens again. That would be even better. That's Neymar. Like, so far at the top, it's crazy. Um, so and then and then sort of the rest of my gallery. And how it is, I have a Trippier and a Guimaraes rare who are a nice stack on good game weeks, and they now have midweek utility. Um, I have a super rare Danny Parejo and a super rare Joel Polinia, who Parejo is a great option, especially at home. He's a fantastic scorer. He's a penalty taker, set piece taker, really good card to have. Joel Polinia is very matchup dependent and is not someone I think I'll ever put in an elite lineup, but. He's nice to have if I want to play like a cat mode or something, but he is someone I am looking to sell because I just think like 
I could never play a, a lineup that had rare Neymar, super rare Kim, rare Kimmich, and then have Jao Polinia in there as well. <laughs> Even if he's playing the worst team in existence, I just couldn't yeah. do it. I wouldn't feel confident. So what made sense to me, and I think why this show was kind of born, was I was looking at potentially picking up a super rare forward for Champion Europe because I thought what would make the most sense is it if I bought a good super rare forward, I could put him into a team with Neuer, Super Air Kim, Kimmich, Neymar, then the forward if Danny Parejo doesn't have a good matchup. Or I could put him into a team that has, let's say, Nick Pope, Trip- Trippier, Gamarish, and then I've got a choice of like the Super Air forward and Danny Parejo or the Super Air forward Kim and Jay or however. It-, it gives me a lot of different options then with having three good Super Rares rather than just two and the five or six rares I've got. Um so that's that's where this show spawned from. Now, originally, I'd thought I'd gone to Sean and we spoke about Harry Kane. But the problem is I have a 28 ETH gallery. Spending six on a Harry Kane, maybe more if he does move to Bayern, makes no sense. That's like, what, 30% of my gallery nearly? That doesn't make, that's not right, is it? Yeah, no, 15%, 15% yeah. of my gallery. Um wouldn't make any sense to me because if Harry Kane snapped his ankle, if if T- Tap Sobers got woke up, you know, he's had a terrible morning, someone gave him the wrong breakfast, he's fuming and he goes and takes it out on Harry Kane's ankles. And I have a six, seven ETH card in my gallery that that doesn't have utility for me for six months, I'm screwed. I then have to hit the deposit button and I don't want to do that. So I was looking at alternatives and some of the ones we spoke about were players like Coman, who I think is another player that benefits massively if Kane goes. He's going to be, I think not only did you benefit from having Kane to aim at, but Kane's an incredible playmaker. And I think Coman, someone like Coman would benefit massively in that regard. I looked at Mo Salah because I just think he is a lights out attacker. I think he's actually a bit undervalued at the moment. I feel like he should be a bit more. Um, I looked at Hyung Min Son. I think, Kane staying or leaving has a similar effect on him. I think with Ange there, he's, we're going to see the best of Son. And he links to my Kim Min Jae. We get that South Korean link for uh, international matchups, um, which honestly, looking at their history with international matchups, they sometimes smash. And, and yeah. like it's 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 a, a weird one, but it kind of does make sense as well for the gallery. Um, but also, like I'm also looking if anyone else has any ideas. Like I, I don't have the five, six, seven ETH that I had because. I, I decided to also pursue something else, but we're still looking at one, two, maybe three ETH to put into a, a forward. I'm thinking, I think what makes sense is probably the one to two mark so that it's not too much con- like on one card that may not even play if I have a great matchup for Danny Parejo, right? Because I think if Parejo is playing bottom of the league at home, I feel like he's maybe a better option. Why not another super rare midfielder? Like why why force yourself into the forward into like having to play two forwards and get another one that you play instead of Parejo? Because you were like, if Parejo doesn't have a good matchup, then I'll just play the super rare forward. But like, why not just get another midfielder? Only because it's so much easier to get a, a very good midfielder for like significantly less than the forward. It's true. It's not it's not off the table completely. I think it made sense to get a forward based on having the Newcastle players as well. Um let's say we have a game week where Bayern play Dortmund and I don't want to play the Bayern stack in that game or, or Bayern have a midweek Champions League game against a Barcelona or a Real Madrid or something, depending on who they get in their group, then I can play the um, Newcastle players. Already have the rare Guimaraes as a midfielder there and the rare Neymar to put into that team. Um, but if I put if, if I can't use Neymar, I can't use two midfielders and Guimaraes, if that makes sense. So yeah. it was kind of one that linked everything together, but it's not off the table completely. Yeah, so Sower Brains just asked, isn't Sala a terrible Sower player? Uh, it, it, he's not terrible. I would not personally go down that route, and I, I told Haber as much. I also told Haber, like, the most important thing, too, you cannot sacrifice midweeks with this this setup right Laird so I told hey bro I'm like you can't buy Mo Salah who's not going to play in the midweeks because they're in the Europa League and they're not going to take it seriously um so like it is again like you talked about with the lack of AA from Salah yeah so so range in limiteds I I wouldn't want Salah I don't think he can hit enough of the upside to really generate and even like in a rare pro lineup like it's it's a bit tricky he is 
okay. It's just a bit difficult to get to like 80 to 90 plus. But as you see here, like he can get enough 80s and, and be in play. Uh, but there are people I would rather look at. So I told Haber keeps asking me the question of like who should we do go with? And and so we'll talk a bit about like overall champion use strategy and like what I'm thinking. Um, goalie, again, you guys know the, the best teams. Like you, we don't need to go over like, oh, Thibaut Courtois, good goalie, yada, yada, yada. We don't need to go over that stuff. Uh, defender is a spot that I think is, is super interesting. Um, from an attainable really? perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that you're going to, well, you're going to stack your, your defender with your goalie most of the time, like how Haber did with Tim Minjay and obviously with Neuer. But, like, I think some names that could make sense, uh, Rafael Guerrero, if he's going to start. And I, I haven't told Haber as much. So his his building blocks here are, are um, Neuer, Kim Minjay, Super Rare, and Kimmy. Those are his building blocks. Outside of that, you can go in a lot of different ways. But I said, and I think you'll agree, Laird, that defender for Bayern is one of the spots. Like, normally you don't want two defenders in a lineup unless they have super high-end upside, which obviously most defenders don't really have. Bayern defenders have them. Like, when Bayern defenders smash, a lot of the time there's a few of them that smash. So, anyways, I said, I'm like, if Rafa Guerrero ends up being the left back for them and they get rid of Davies or they move Davies up more on the wing, that makes a lot of sense to me. You could run a... Guerrero, Kim Min Jae, Neuer with two super stack, Kimmich, and then you run forward whoever you want to run. Like I, in that situation, I would, I would like have a Coman rare or something on the bench for stacking purposes. Then I'd, I'd run Neymar. Like I'd run Neymar frequently in that line. Or let's say Harry Kane goes to Bayern. Boom! You buy Harry Kane. You run Kimmich Kane midfield forward. Then you run the defensive stack. It gives you a good combination. Um, I think some others that make sense, obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold, obviously, Trippier. Uh, also, for those those were wondering today, like, this this is more going to be, like, we're not going to talk about cheap, viable options for the most part. Like, we're talking about how, like, if you have a bigger gallery and you're trying to make some moves happen to, to get your lineup set. And it could work in limiteds and rares as well. But, like, we're trying to talk about, like, a rare pro lineup and, like, what is the most optimal. So, Ron was bringing up uh, Ren. And you have a situation where, like, I think Ren could be good, but I think that that's not exactly where you're going to look at. I don't think they're elite enough in league to make that happen. And Pico made the same point about uh, about Sala as TAA, is that he probably is not going to give you midweeks. He could, but most likely Liverpool's not going to focus on that. So back to where we were discussing is he talked about Kingsley Coman Super Rare. I think Kingsley Coman Super Rare makes a lot of sense. However... Kingsley Coman has a lot of random DNPs in him. And like sometimes just gets phased out of the lineup more than you want. And if you look at Kim Min or Kingsley Coman, like, is this really the guy that you want to be hanging your hat on week in, week out? Uh, and it's probably not is the answer. Uh, so it's really, I told him because he asked about Oseman and Kevin Hurd just brought up could a rare Oseman make the fit. I think Oshman depends on where he goes. If Oshman goes to PSG or Bayern, I think he can improve into a 64, 66 average player and probably can be viable. If he doesn't and he stays at Napoli or he goes to Manchester United, I don't think he's as good as he would need to be to be in like a division three lineup to really end up near the top of the leaderboards. So I think that there's a, uh, there's lots of ways in which you can go, and Haber has one of the better setups you can have. And uh, Johanathan just brought up what Haber also mentioned, and uh, this is a discussion point that he had. And he talked about getting a Bruno Fernandez rare and a Rashford super rare. The issue is I just don't think Rashford is good enough. Uh, Bruno definitely is. And realistically, I even sort of mentioned him to that when he was discussing getting a Kerry Kane um, super I'm like, you should just get a Bruno super rare and call it a day. And that would make you more happy than getting a Harry Kane super rare. Yeah. Just go I, get that. I, favor. Yeah. This, this is, this is my issue with talking to Sean, right? Cause Sean talks to me on a level as if we're both sat here with the same level of gallery. Like my gallery is less than 10% of yours. If you know but, me, you know I'm going to say spend more money. That's definitely one of absolutely. my Absolutely. If I look, if I could go out and I could, 
guarantee that I could buy a super rare Bruno Fernandez at the same price that he was going for two months ago. Acta picked up two for around, uh, what is that in ETH? About four ETH. I probably would. But the the issue is, is that I don't think there's a chance now, especially with the way Bruno ended last season, with the strength that United are looking at in terms of, you know, we're looking at getting a new forward in. Um, we've we've already imp- we're going to be improving the goalkeeper scenario and things like that. And and overall, our play should be a lot more advanced. I don't. I think you're stupid to sell a Bruno for less than six or seven. And I feel like we've already established it just doesn't make sense for my gallery size to actually buy a card of that value. Because if Bru- although Bruno is incredibly reliable, and so is Harry Kane, to be fair, he hasn't actually had an injury in two years. It's just if, like if that if they do get injured if like it's just such a worry in the back of my mind i don't think i can i don't think i got the stones to do it i think if you're not changing the value of your gallery meaning like a humongous deposit yeah it's just exactly, way too yeah. risky to have that yeah. much of your gallery right. tied up in one card uh, the name that made the most sense for me from what he was doing was i i told him i thought getting a like Assuming Rafael Guerrero is the starter, or if it ends up being Delict, this is part of the problem, right? If you're doing, if sorry you're doing, to cut you off because, but like you're going down what I wanted to bring up before, like the Bayern back line is not like the, it's not four players that you always know will start. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, like you were saying, like oh, if you have multiple guys, like yeah, it can really smash. But like now you're having to get two guys into this. That was also when partially. You that was also partially why I wanted a forward as well, because let's no say way. for some reason, Kim is not favored. I have like, I can, I can put in another defender, whether it be Trippier or I've been looking at picking up another rare defender in uh champion Europe. Then I can still play Kimmich Parejo and a forward, but I don't yeah. want to pick up another super rare defender. I don't want to, I don't want to go down that route as well because I'd rather, I'd rather be able to play, that that sort of setup and have an, a rare defender and a rare goalkeeper, if that makes sense. Fling Flong just brought up the most risky option that you are. I, I said this to you. Yes, it is a risk. It's a complete gamble. But I'm a gambling man. Yeah, so Terrier makes a lot of sense if you get pre-injury Terrier, which yeah. is probably not going to happen. It's possible. You never know, but it's definitely a big risk on Terrier. Um, I totally can understand someone going for it the issue is is like i mean terry super is probably like 1.5 eth right now give or take and that's not a price where you're getting reduced price due to the risk you're getting yeah is, i think as who well is, who's the last sorry. player that came back from a torn acl and played well fairly quickly i don't remember i was gonna say the other thing with terry is ren have improved massively and spent a bit since he got injured. Like they brought in um, Toko Kambe and Salah, and they obviously have Doku in great form, who was injured before when Terrier was smashing. And Giori is, is playing really well on the left side as well. I don't know if it's a guarantee that Terrier even starts when he's back. Like he will eventually, but I don't. I I feel like there'll be a, a maybe two month period where he's getting. 30 minutes off the bench or he's getting 45 minutes and coming off just to try and manage him back into the squad because realistically they, they are smashing without him they don't need to rush him back in order to get good results even when he gets back he doesn't have nearly the responsibility he w- he did before the injury like they don't need him to do as much and so Most I can't... likely yeah it's yeah i i definitely understand it i definitely understand the risk right like he's a pretty high-end guy that produced pretty damn well uh they brought. We have some Florian Wirtz brings up. Look, I just don't know if Wirtz is good enough. Like if you're buying Florian Wirtz, you're buying for U23 purposes, right? Like if you're buying and buying a Florian Wirtz Super, which I'm not saying is a bad idea, you're going to um, you're you're likely buying that with the idea that you're running like a, a U23 stack. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you can't really do that otherwise uh genesis we're just gonna i i saw you write a couple and you bring up cherokee 
Uh, Haber would definitely have a lot of fun with Cherokee if Cherokee was locked in as the starter, and that would be a, a good time. But I definitely, definitely, uh, oh, 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 uh, we have Blue Tomatoes is bringing up oh. as the uh, the ACL answer. But, like, the issue is, like, Wurtz was a much worse player than he was the previous year. Like, Wurtz's L40 is 55, and he closed the year, like, really poorly. Um so, like, I, I'm not saying work. He's also good. eight years younger. He's also a lot younger than Terry, but I, uh, Terry is a young enough. Even age. though age is just a number. Yeah, because he's like 20 years younger than you. <laughs> Verts? Yeah, but like, so, so he did come back and was solid, yeah. but 21 actually. He wasn't as good as he was the previous year before he got injured. I mean, I guess he was similar, but like, he, he didn't take the step forward that you were. You were getting there. And yeah, Alex brings up he had the odd DNP or sub games last year that that those hurt. And that like Terry is not gonna just come back in day one, just 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. It's not it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have random weeks where you get snake bit by things. But here's the thing, too, I want to address with Haber saying his gallery is not like mine and he can't do what we're doing. The issue is, is that if you're playing Champ Europe and that's your plans, like you're playing in the big boy level, right? Like you have to come with a good game plan and a good idea and a good process. And you most likely cannot come from a cheap option. So even though your gallery may be worth 10% of what my gallery is, if you are coming in and you are playing the Champ Europe Rare Pro and that's like what you're working on prioritizing, you are playing that level, even if your gallery isn't as big as mine. Like you have to come with a game plan to match galleries that are bigger than mine. Even you're not wrong. Um, I think difference being that I think you you don't I don't necessarily think you have to spend the level that is being suggested to compete. I, agree. Oh, I, agree I think that. that if you're smart about it, you can invest a percentage of that and have good viable options. I mean, for example, like Parejo is a, is a, uh, to use him as another example, right? He's a kind of player that. He's super at the moment, probably about a 0.6 ETH card, right? Maybe maybe even less than that if you get the right guy. You might be even might be able to get less than that. And he's a card where you get a good home matchup. You can absolutely smash with that card. Um, and and that's significantly cheaper than if you were to go out and buy uh, Kimmich, for example, or someone like that, who every week, yes, you can, you can put him into a lineup and know that he'll get a really good score. But he's like... I guess what I'm saying is I think you can your, your strategy can be different. Like I don't plan on every single week getting a top tier reward in in Champion Europe. I don't think that'll happen. But I do think that I reckon two out of five game weeks, I can be very confident. Maybe three out of five game weeks, given the fact that it's a buy-in stack and ne if Neymar stays as well. I think Neymar staying is a big contingent too. But I would say three out of five game weeks, including midweeks, I could probably have a really confident feeling I'll get at least sort of a, a high tier two, maybe a tier one or higher um, with the players I have. And I haven't spent anywhere near as much as some of the galleries that I'll be competing against. So Kevin brought up uh, Kyogo. I, I agree with Tabor. <laughs> Let's go. There, there you go. Yeah, so uh, we have we have a few names. We'll start running through some names. Uh, Ke er, Kevin Herb brought up Kyogo. Kyogo is definitely not a... a D3 player. He doesn't have yeah. the likes at all. He just doesn't really get the job done. Bobby said at this point, get Halon and call it a day. Like, here's the thing. You're not going to get Halon for Champ Europe, I don't think, because you're just buying a worse player than other guys you can buy for cheaper. Because that goes to the same point. Like, if you're buying Halon, you're paying like 12. I'd much rather have Bruno Fernandez at like 7 than Halon at like 12. And it's nothing against Halon, but it's just you're not doing it. Uh, what about here from David Alves? What's, what happened yeah. to, what's wrong with Griezmann? No, Griezmann's someone I brought up. I think to Hayward. Griezmann's got a three card. Guy. What? I, I I would be shocked if you can actually get Griezmann for for that these oh. days. I think with so I think there's a bit That's of panic, fair. a bit of panic with that card with the Saudi links. Um, just Griezmann in general, and I saw his rare take a bit of a hit. He but, shut him down immediately. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's gonna stay. And he's he's a card where if I could pay three for that card, I would. I would be shocked though. It was like I remember last year, Sean. Do you remember when I was talking about getting a top tier super rare for All Star Rare Pro, and yeah. you told me to get Teddy Tuma? I just couldn't not get a Teddy Tuma for a price that would make sense. And I think that would be the same for um, for Griezmann. That's fair. Sadly, I don't, I'm not sure how many people are willing to give it up. I would exactly. Even, I it's would, just too good. 
I would probably sell my Griezmann if someone came with like four or five ETH. I don't think I would do three. Yeah. Um, so a few other people. So I think I think the issue too is like we have a lot of names that are being discussed in chat. I just don't think these guys are good enough to really be in discussion. So like uh, we have a Liao uh, bring up by Sora Brand. I don't think Liao is good enough from what we've seen up to this point to be in contention. Like he's a guy that just doesn't really have the best upside. He is improving. Uh, Jack Peterson brings up Nicholas Gonzalez. Uh, he's not even a discussion point. At no, all. it's funny. Um, if you actually look at Nico Gonzalez and you look deeper into the stats, all of his big scores are actually in the conference league against Wi-Fi passwords. Yeah. None of, it, none of his scores are in the Serie A. He's, he's kind of like, like I'm, I'm not trying to say this to, to sound mean, but like he just has a lot of random DNPs and stuff. He's just way too unstable of a player to uh, – to go with um germ brings up isaacson uh i don't think isaacson's going there based on what we've seen but if he does i would think he's not good enough he's dead. uh Johannathan brings up haller and brant uh they're just not good enough like how no. wasn't good enough at ix and he's definitely not going to be good enough here um and then brant is not good enough um like I, and when i say not good enough i mean you can make things happen but like they're not consistently like if you for you to realistically compete in the champ for pro division, right? You need to get guys that are like, if you're not scoring 80 to 90s plus consistently, you're not gonna get the job done. Funny you we bring up Dwight McNeil. Dwight McNeil was pretty good at the end of last year. Uh David Alvis brings up uh Berardi. I think that is an option, um, but wasn't as good enough. Uh Jonathan is discussing He's going to is that right? What? Berardi? Yes, I, I saw that as well. I saw the Berardi links So Lazio. So here's the thing. So, Jonathan, you bring up Haller smashing. In his 20 games that he played at the end of the year, he had one game that was good enough. That doesn't cut it. One game, one game doesn't well. cut it. Like, no. yeah, he might have been smashing and he had a lot of goals, but he's a, he's a goal-dependent striker with no AA. Like, he averaged four AA a game. That just doesn't cut it. That's just not a guy that's going to get the job done. Um, I, someone that was interesting that was brought up here was, uh, I forgot. Oh, Germ brought up Asensio. So yeah, here's my he's one I've got up. Yeah. with Asensio. I don't think Asensio is locked in enough to the position to work, to, to go after Asensio. If he is the right winger and he's like the long-term right winger, uh, I think Asensio could be good enough. I just, Think there's a lot of questions and then the other name that was brought up that i do think has a bit more interest to to me um at least is dabala dabala if you look through oh, his blog, the issue i think for dabala hey joao felix did you see his links layer it's like psg or bust and that's that's fantastic no there was another one today that wasn't as exciting um, um well no it's benfica that's probably more of exciting layer. oh uh i guess it was yeah uh coley brings up sandro tonali for two e or for 2K, so about an ETH, that he's not good enough, uh, realistically. Uh, but Dabala, you look at Dabala, I, I you... love Dabala, but he's got cabbage ankles. It just that's, Yeah, you out. can't possibly buy that card. Correct, that's the yeah. problem with Dabala. All these guys are, um, are difficult to really consistently focus on. I'm not saying they can't get the job done in certain situations. Same thing goes for Fuller brings up Fakir. Look, if you gave me Fakir two years ago, I would yeah. totally say he's someone that could be up there. But dude, what makes him any different than Terry? Yeah, he's probably even worse than Terry because he's older and has a lot more issues long term than he's had. Um, Joe brings up again Sala. Look, I think Sala makes sense to some extent because you know what you're getting out of him. I just don't know if he's quite good enough. And then Genesis brings up Nkunku. Here's the thing with that Chelsea was so freaking atrocious last year that it is very difficult for me to sign off on a Chelsea player. However, Nkunku does have that potential upside and he is young enough that that is a somewhat appealing spot. The issue is, is that if you're doing something like that, you're taking a pretty, pretty large risk. Yeah. Joe thinks Saul is going to play the midweeks. I don't know. I, I'll believe that the Liverpool guys are playing midweeks when I see them out there. Yeah, that I, I do agree with that. I think um, some of the names just mentioned, 
I like Barardi, but the issue is, if you look at Barardi, um, free kick taker at Sassuolo, he's taken second most corners, 21, and the second guy had 30. So I think he takes corners from a certain side, the guy takes from the other side. Penalty taker, five out of five penalties this season. Um, I think, I don't know if Barardi goes to Lazio and gets put on all those set pieces as well. And I think that would significantly hurt his game. So he's one where I'm, I'm a bit worried. Um, Dwight McNeil, I, I think, like, had, like, yes, he had a couple of decent games towards the back end of last season, but we're talking about a team that were struggling for relegation last year, haven't really improved their team massively. Yes, they have another manager, but it's not like they saw a huge upside in results last year. Um, I don't know if I could... I, I could put him in a lineup where I feel com- comfortable. Asenjo is one I like because he's rumored to be the false nine there at PSG. And apparently yeah. he's like Enrique's guy. Um, yes. He, that Enrique I like. I, I do like, I like Asensio. I think he's a good value at the moment as well. He's one that I'm really considering. Um, yeah. He's just, again, though, like I, for me, I think Asensio mm-hmm scares me if they lose Neymar and Mbappe. Mm-hmm. If they keep Neymar and Mbappe, I love Asensio because I think you have a, a left wing Neymar, right wing Asensio striker Mbappe and he will just eat. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the, like if they lose Neymar and Mbappe, that scares me. Uh Pico brings up Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes looks like one of the worst cards I've seen. In yeah, screw that. Like what he does. Like I don't think if he plays for Newcastle, he would be considered in this situation. Um, someone that's a bit interesting that was brought up that I was better than I thought. Bobby brought up Lacazette. Lacazette was, I, obviously he's a striker and he's not going to have as much AA, but he was really good last year and he put up three ninety pluses, uh, some eighty five. The issue is I just don't know if there's enough spikes, but there is a lot of consistency with him that he does play every game. You don't really have to worry about that, which is is a positive to bring in with things. But yeah, circling back to Asensio, here's the thing: if Asensio, if you told me Asensio started every game for PSG this year. And you, like, guarantee me that that was going to happen. I'm more than happy to give you, like, five ETH for Asensio. The issue is is that, man, I don't know if that's the guy that PSG is going to just, like, hand the keys to and, and lock in. I think PSG will be very different this year, but I don't, like, I think... I think they're they're really looking at changing PSG. I don't think they're going to be the same. Let's buy a martyr. Let's buy a, a old guy that has an insane career behind him that we're going to get excited about. I think they are truly trying to move into a younger, more talented squad that fits the right system. And the uh, Asensio buy for Enrique or, or bringing, I think he got him a free, makes so much sense. And I do think he'll start a lot of games. Um, again, though, my worry is is if if we don't have those elite forwards in front of him, like let's say they sell Mbappe and they let Neymar go, and let's say out of all the rumors we've seen, they go and get I don't know um, Cherky and I, I can't think of anyone else that have been linked to Jao Felix, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's say they get Cherky and Jao Felix. Yes, they're still going to win games. Essentio goes from getting probably an L40 of 70 plus to an L40 of like 60 plus. I think he drastically loses a lot of potential assists or goals where the creativity of a Neymar or the um, finishing ability of a Mbappe would get him. That's my fear. I feel like we're getting to the point of the conversation where people are just throwing names out. Like I'm yeah. looking at the chat, a few people said yeah. Timo Werner, but like the the list isn't that long, right? Of like right. elite champion Europe forwards. So not having one doesn't seem that detrimental unless I'm looking at it the opposite. Like I could see like, oh, they're not that many. So you have to have one of them or it's, they're just not that many of them. So like you can, you can make it up elsewhere. Like I tend to side on that. Cause you're like having to spend so much for the elite guys that, and if there are, I mean, realistically, of the guys we talked about, like how many are you putting in this category of elite? Like, it, is it six, five? Of the guy who just spoke about, I would put maybe two. I feel like we've been talking about, if we're talking about like tiers, I feel like a lot of the guys that we've just spoke about are in that tier two, maybe pushing tier one category, whereas I would call elite tier zero. And I don't think any of them realistically are kind of tier zero that we spoke about because I think the tier zero is you're spending like $15,000 on, right? Like 10, $15,000. If 
if the tier zero is out of the question and yep. it's like Mbappe, Griezmann, Kane. I mean, I think we yeah. can go through it. We go through it because it's not going to take long, right? The tier zero defenders are. No, I just mean forward for now, though. Oh, so for forwards, tier zero forwards are to me would be Griezmann, Mbappe, Kane, and Neymar. That's it. And so if you can't get one of those guys, not to say is everyone else the same, but is everyone else basically the same? Uh, no, yes and but... in... I think I get I do get I, I get what point you're making. I think I think if you can't get one of those, I think maybe the smartest thing to do is almost get two lesser ones that right. make up one, right? And then right. rotate right. them. Like for example, we'll just we'll use a couple names. The issue is some of these guys aren't priced that much cheaper than what you could get other guys for, right? Like right, but then those are the easy those are the easy ones you can skip over to get somebody right. else. But like I, it, it's hard to look at things and be like, I mean, I'll, I'll use I guess like maybe you want to buy like Lacazette and I don't know. You also didn't mention Vinny Jr. at all. But I think, we, my, well, I think Vinny Jr. Vinny Jr. is like slightly below. He's below this group, but he's also like you're going to be using him in U23, I think, a lot right now because of what's in U23. Same thing with Holland. I, like, I wouldn't put him or Holland in the – I wouldn't put them in the elite tier, tier in Champ Europe. I would put them in like the tier below elite with all, a lot of these other guys. Um, but like, yeah, like maybe. All right, so just I'm gonna use this name that David Alves brought up. Jonathan David is not good enough. But I agree. Maybe you buy Jonathan David, you buy Lacazette, you buy someone else, and then there you just play matchups based on uh, who Scosmo brings up. Lautaro Martinez. Like these are all guys that are not good enough, right? They're not in this tier. But, but- if you can get, but they're not good enough for, for every price. week. What? They're not good enough to play every week. Correct. But they're good enough to rotate in. Right. You run, and also it cuts down your variance too, right? Like you have, and I think Kingsley Coman is a great example. Like you have Kingsley Coman, you have Mo Solid. The issue is some of these guys. Like I'll give example of guys that are not good enough that are priced really expensively. Probably Mo Solid, not good enough, but it's priced at like three. Oshaman priced at like three and a half. If he goes to Bayern or PSG, that would change my opinion on Oshaman. Sala is not good enough, but he's priced at like three, three and a half ETH. Um, like Lacazette, he's priced at two and a half. If you can get him for like one, 1. 1.5, like somewhere, it's, it's a bit different. Uh, like Ben Yedder, like Ben Yedder. Ben Yedder is really cheap. Like maybe Ben Yedder is someone that you're interested in. I don't know where Ben Yedder's at. I'm not familiar with the situation. I'm just looking purely off of like scoring. So I definitely think the idea of getting some depth and getting some other options is, uh, and and Scosmo brings up a good point. For a 28 ETH gallery, you're unlikely to have a tier zero super forward, which is the point. However, here's the counterpoint. I don't think forward is where I go to get the other super rare. If I'm not going to get that, and which is what Laird's discussion uh, was from the beginning. He would go to midfielders because, like we just talked about, Parejo, Parejo can be pretty damn elite some of the time. Parejo costs, I don't even know what Parejo costs. I'm going to guess it's like an E right now. Parejo's way less than that. He's like 0. 0.6. No. Yeah. 0. 0.6. Can we stop so talking you, about it? Because I kind of wanted one and I don't want, I don't want to keep talking about it. It makes sense. I mean, another another good option, but like this is, and this guy is more expensive, but he's really elite. Rodrigo. You may be able to get Rodrigo super for like three to four ETH, and that plays but not not that rodrigo the other one the oh midfield. sorry yeah. i'm on midfield rodrigo uh or rodri i i know the one show we had we got made fun of because we used the name that sower uses for us but like he has a auction i think uh i thought That's he had an auction i saw his auction at some point did it did it not like go off oh there he is he definitely had an auction in the gallery but I'm, oh i no for super rare? yeah i could have sworn i saw a super rare the other day with him in the gallery in the in the market but I must not have. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was drunk. Who knows? Um, who knows? So, but like a card like that, like goes a lot further. I think someone brought up Enzo Lafie earlier. Enzo Lafie could be really good this year. I don't know if he will be or not. Uh, Cosmo wants to sell his Declan Rice uh, as well. Just, but yeah, <laughs> like Alex Garcia. Alex Garcia is someone who has shown to be good at times. Maybe he goes back that. Uh, here's a great example, but he's changing teams, but he would have been a great example last year. And Laird, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but 
Hoiberg for Tottenham yeah. was really damn good. You could probably buy his super for like under an ETH, and he was really good. Is or he at Madrid, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, which I'm assuming will be not great, but who knows? But I mean, for his position, though, that it seems like it's a position that can this, continue to score. Not a lot this of this circles back to the two names that Haber mentioned that I thought made the most sense because we can come full circle here. I thought Hyung, and we didn't mention one of them. Hyung Min So to me makes a lot of sense. If you look back last year, he wasn't that good, but he apparently carried an injury the entire season. Yeah. If you look back the year before, he had a lot more 80 to 90 to 100 point games. Also, the name that I think you can pair with him that makes a lot of sense to me is James Madison. James Madison is one of those midfielders on the site that he can put up those elite level scores. The issue with him is he went through some injuries, which makes it a bit trickier. But if you look at his overall scoring, like let's look at his, his SO5 scoring and let's look at his uh, starts. So let's just look at his starts and his SO5. And we're going to see an elite level midfield. Do you know what's, what's interesting though, and what I didn't realize until today, Spurs don't have midweek. No. Or correct. correct. Which, which for the purposes of like, of this, you can buy different guys in the midweek that would fit. So, like, instead of buying Harry Kane for, like, 70, you could buy a Sun and a Madison for the weekends. And then you could buy, like, a X person for the, the midweeks, right? Like, you could buy a Kingsley Coman. So, like, maybe you buy, like, Kingsley Coman, Sun, Madison. The midweeks, you have a Byron stack that can run out full force uh, and run well. And then on the weekends, you have this option where you have a bit more of a Tottenham stack. And the nice thing is, is they're not playing on the weekends means they're, or they're not playing midweeks means they are always fresh on the weekends. You never have to worry about rotational risk and you can just get them to go out there and play pretty well, typically. The, the issue is that you're, the, the conversation started with you have too many good pieces that you can't throw away midweeks. And now we're spending all of the presumed budget on two players for weekends and we have not solved the midweek problem. No, I, that's not Sorry. true. I'm, I'm giving up the mid, I'm giving up the not punting the midweek. And what I'm doing is getting players to play on the weekend, but then also using the excess funds to buy the midweek. I, yeah. We just haven't found any excess funds. That's the problem. I and mean, you're spending yeah. like two weeks. Sean's strategy is invest more money deposit 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 that is sean's strategy it's a great strategy if if i if i was a whale don't get me wrong i would okay here's um, sorry here's the name again that this isn't a midweek name but it's an interesting name i think james ward prowse uh was just brought up by alex wilson james ward prowse assuming he goes to i don't it doesn't even really matter like if he's on west ham james ward prowse is going to be Pretty damn solid because he was on by far the worst team in the league last year, and he put up some really solid numbers with some spikes. Um, not as many spikes as you want, but again, this team was by far the worst team in the league. Um, so I think I, that he could be an interesting player as well. If I was to buy a super midfielder, I think one of the names I would look at is Lee Malou. I, I didn't realize until the other day just how ridiculously good this guy is, especially in such a low-tier side in the French League. Like this guy is, puts up some really good scores for his price. Yeah, he'd be someone no, I'd be very interested in. I have no arguments on that. Now, granted, he did change teams, or no, he didn't change teams. But yeah, it's, no, like, that's yeah. a reasonable, a reasonable option. Uh, Beauregard last year was obviously really good, but he assumed a lot more responsibilities with uh, the exit of uh, Terry. Terry injury. Pascal Gross is another one I like. He's he's uh, very interesting. I'm not sure what Gross has done on Sower. I know he he used to be a DFS god. Yeah, he's he's fine. Yeah, I, th I would they say have not. midweeks. Yep. Yeah, I don't I don't know. He's not he doesn't spike enough. I would say. Uh, yeah, I mean. Sop so here's here's a, a thing that Sopsy brings up that I think is valid too. So part of the idea of like a team like Liverpool not playing midweeks doesn't mean they're not playing midweeks. It means the guys like Sala and those guys are not playing midweeks. If they're not playing midweeks, it likely means that a guy like Diego Jota is playing midweek. 
against like some just horrendous teams. So you have a guy like Diego Jota who is just terrible on the weekends and you're just not playing him. But then on the uh, on the midweeks, if you know he's going to start because you know they're not going to take it seriously and they're going out there against some terrible team from wherever, he could be a, a, a player that makes quite a bit of sense. I I yeah I do agree with you. I think the only the only thing is I think you underestimate how seriously Liverpool take Europe, regardless of the competition. I agree. They, well, that club that club's built on European football, and Klopp will play his strongest side. I think in most Europa League games, just because that's just him. He just loves like that. He loves Liverpool in European football, winning European trophies. Might be I'll, easier I'll, to win Europa than to qualify for the, the for the Champions League in the Prem. Possibly. Yeah, that's true. I'll be, look. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe in September when I see them playing in the Europa League. If if he's out there, match day one running, the main guys. I'll believe it when I see it because that's not usually how the Premier League teams take that. So, yeah, Softy said not till after Christmas. Yeah, I'm not saying that if they get to the quarters of the, the Europa League, they're not going to take it seriously. They will take it seriously at that point. I will be, I will believe it when I see it. And I'm not saying they won't because they might. You don't really know what any team is going to do. But like, I'll believe it when I see it that in September in Uzbekistan, Mo Salah's on the field, right? <laughs> and I'll, I'll get back to you guys if I see that happen and be like, yep, okay, that happened. I didn't expect it. That's fair. That's funny. Like, do you, do you really think in September in Uzbekistan, Sal is going to be out there on the field, Haber? I wouldn't rule I, it out. To be actually, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I do think there is a solid possibility. I just think that's just like that's just him. He's such an ambitious player. Like, I never. I, I feel like someone like Sally would never see go to Saudi Arabia. I feel like he's gonna go that that just wants to score at the highest level every game. You know, not to mention he penalty taker as well. And though you know those Uzbekis there and there and their their clog feet you know, they where they tackle people in the box. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, you know, so all right. Here's the good point I, there as well. Doku, agree, are you about to bring him up? I agree with this. If Doku is healthy and he is at Ren playing every week, that could be a card that would fit the bill. If is a big, I think a big question there because he's course. he is one that I remember saying to you like I almost bought this guy. I almost bought his super rare when I bought his rare. Um, that quick quick trades. Where, where he bought the Super Air, it was the one I was going to buy. The reason why I haven't is because we guess we've got a good spell of him being fit right now, but it takes one tackle, and it's yeah. so easy. That tackle is so easy. I don't know. A freak, like, I just don't... I If I'm going to... I, 1.3 is not quite the 5 or 6 ETH we're talking about Harry Kane, but if I'm going to spend over an ETH on a card, it is a player where like i i just feel like i want that that security of okay he's not had a big issue in the last couple of years that's kept him out for a long time or he's not a recurring dmp risk he's he's someone that i know every week he's going to be in the starting 11 in a, in, a, in a league game for example and and that's why kingsley coman scares me as well because he does just randomly get rested um so yeah for me it's like like i always look at those players that are just in the starting lineup every week uh, i don't want to be on a Friday morning, seeing a notification, OMG, Doku is on the bench or, or some kind of press conference or something like that. And then I'm like freaking out trying to rejig my lineup. You know what I mean? Here's here's my it, thought. Flink on, yeah, there is risk. Might be the biggest understatement I've seen in a long time. Look, yeah. here's the thing though. I thought that was the best name that anyone's given us in this whole, in this like stretch, right? Like he is a you price. Super That's why you think that. No, but his price is a price that makes, like what? What champ Europe forward are you buying for 1.3 ETH that you think can be like elite level guy? Like it, it just doesn't exist, right? Like it's not- you are spot on. You are 100% right. Yeah. But again, though, there is a reason why that card is 1.3 ETH is because sure. everyone else shares the same sentiment as me. If Correct. I had, If I had a budget of 10 ETH right now, I'd go and buy that card straight away. But the issue is my budget is closer to like three. And if I spend a third of that, when I want, to, I've got other buys I want to make as well. Champion Europe's not only my main focus next year. If it was, I would go and buy that card, but it's not. Um, I have other buys I want to make as well. So it's like, it. I, I don't know if I can put. I, I feel like if I bought a docu for one point three, I would also have to then buy cover for let's say 
0.6, 0.7. And I'm actually then ended up spending two thirds of my budget right. on essentially one card and a backup that I don't need if I buy someone for 1.5 ETH who starts every game that I don't have to worry too much about. But again, who are you spending 1.5? Like, like a good example. Like if you bought Komon, right? You're, it's the exact same yeah, situation. Yeah, I mean, it's too easy. Yeah. It's the same think, situation, right? Like you're not buying Komon and being like, I don't need cover for Komon. Yeah, for uh, sure. A, a name that hasn't been mentioned that I mentioned to you, and I think you shot me down a little bit, but I, I, it's again someone I would like to bring up. Lewandowski. Yeah, well, so, I've shot him down because he's old as shit, and he's he he's old as shit, but like not cheap. Like, I, I he's not ridiculously expensive though. Production wise, I think it's okay. I, I mean, it's okay. Like, I guess that's the best way I can say it, right? Like, it's okay. I think it makes sense. It's just he's quite old, and I don't think you're getting like he's gonna be thirty five when the season starts. And I don't think you're getting the price point to justify the age. Is my my opinion. I would agree, but I think with Lewandowski, I mean, I especially looked. Uh, what's the difference between thirty five and thirty three, right? And at thirty, if it, like two years ago, yeah, obviously it's two years. Yeah, shut up, lad. All right. Yes, it's I'm two years. Guy here. I get it, right? But at 33 years old, he had that ridiculous season for Bayern. And I don't look at a guy at 33. Like, I don't look at a guy at 35 and think 33, two years ago, he was in way better shape. You know what I mean? I feel like the difference there is not not massive. I, I don't think that he's a guy where, like, if he was 37, 38, I get it. But it's not like he slowed down this season in terms of how much he's played and, and his output. They just went through a... a a period Barcelona where they were kind of crap in the mid mid year. And that's why he's got so many of those orange and, and lime green scores. But you look at when he first joined, he was a monster. And I think if they get back to that form, which is so possible, they brought in Gundogan, who is an elite playmaker, really good. I think for, for Lewandowski, I believe they're looking at Bernardo Silva. Um, you know, they, they started to pick up a bit of form towards the back end of the season as well. I don't know. For me, he's one that could definitely be a, a possibility. I don't know. For me, I look at it right now. We don't have the super rare price on these two guys, but like, I would much rather sun for like sixty percent of what it's going to cost me to get Lewandowski. Yeah, I mean, I hear that. I I, I do hear that. I, I wonder I just, as well. Um, sorry, I wonder as well with with a Lewandowski if because they've been linked to so many different names. If there is going to be rotation this year with him, but given the fact there hasn't been, I don't know for like a couple of ETH. Not the worst one in the world. I, don't I think know. he absolutely does not like to be rotated, so I doubt he will be rotated. But again, like I, we've just had discussions. Uh, I, I don't know if his upside is high enough, right? Like you look at his like last thirty games, he's not cracked eighty four, and he's cracked eighty once. Like I, again, I understand. I just don't know if he has the upside. Like at the beginning of the season, maybe he did because it would be a good. I don't think it would be a bad card. I don't think if you got it, you're going to be like, damn, this card sucks. But it's more of a, you really need to maximize in one season the, re the return, which to be fair, you might be able to. You have a, your lineup has a potential to return a heavy investment in one year. Because if you bought it, like let's hypothetically say you're out there running Neuer, Kim Minje, Super, Kimmich, uh, Lewandowski, Super, Neymar. Like, that's mm -hmm. really good, right? Like, that's one of the better type of lineups you could run. And you probably have a pretty good chance to return your investment in that year that it, it could be okay. I just, I think I would rather go for, like, Sun personally. But it's it's tricky because you then need midweek cover. You need to figure out that for that thing, too. She can't go into midweek with, like, nothing and just and piss off midweek and not take it serious. Because that's, like, if you have the elite cards – the midweeks are where you make your bread and butter because you just are sitting there printing tier ones because they just out there smashing like whoever dumpy team they're playing. And like, it, that's where you make your bread and butter. Like, yeah, you make it on the weekend, yeah. too, but you make it on the, like you really make your bread and butter in the midweek when like, when Real Madrid is in the midweek and they're playing against like Man City. And then you're sitting there with a Bayern stack and they're playing like, Bruges, like that's yeah, what I hear. Yeah, no, you are spot on with that. You are right, and that's 
that is that is something that I've definitely been taking into account, and it's why. Yeah, I mean, Son makes sense. I I wish there was some kind of clarity from Bayern on on who are going to be the preferred forwards as well. The fact that we have Nabri, Zane, Coman, potentially Mane if he doesn't move to Saudi, potentially Alfonso Davies if they push him forward to to bring in Guerrero as well because the Bayern player makes the most sense with the team, but it's just you know. It, it, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's one of those where I guess I am asking a lot as well with the budget I have. I'm I'm, all, I'm asking for the stars with the budget for the clouds. You know, like uh, I'm asking for a lot for the budget. But I, I beautiful line. Yeah, I yeah. straight off the dome. Yeah, that's that what, really nice. what they pay me the big bucks. And, and the more we've spoke about it as well, the more I am starting to think that potentially getting a super M mid. And a rare, a second rare forward might be potentially smarter, like in the long run. I think just... that should make sense for you. I think there's more. Op- I think your midfield options you feel better about compared to comparatively to the uh, the the super forwards. Because like I just I don't know. I feel like in the mid you could feel pretty confident with the super. Once you get to the forward, you're just way less interested. I, yeah. I think actually, so I, I will say people have mentioned him. I, I don't think we've seen enough to fully know, but I think Rodrigo could maybe make sense. Rodrigo should be pretty locked into playing somewhere on that lineup. I just don't know exactly where. Um, and he, Le- no, uh, sorry, great. um, Rodrigo from Real Madrid or Rodrigo yeah. for, yeah, I, I don't know. But like, if you like, hypothetically speaking, like Rodrigo's 10% more than like Lewandowski, but there's no super, so like, I don't know how much you'd have to pay. Uh, but like maybe that's a card that makes some sense, but it's not cheap. Like you're not going to get cheap, but I don't know. Blue Tomato said Jose Lo's season. I'm really intrigued just to see how that even pays out. Because when I first heard about that, I didn't realize like I didn't realize Jocelyn was 33 years old. Yeah. I thought I thought he was like 20. I thought he was like gerard moreno from a couple of years ago or someone like that you know he's like 28 29 he's gonna be banging in goals and then i look and it's like the guy's been playing for rc de espanol he's 33 years old yes he's actually had a really good season but like huh yeah so that actually yeah. since you just mentioned this 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 card also makes sense in some in some semblance to you i just no, i don't know i haven't seen much i don't him, think it like, does either Gerard Moreno makes some sense. Oh, that one. Gerard Moreno. Oh, yeah, sorry. He he was one I was going to bring up. His yeah. injury record as of the last year and a half is just yeah. horrific. Correct. I, I, and it, it, the, the part that scared me the most actually about him was the fact that he came back, got one start, back to being off the bench, injured again. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, bro. But yeah, definitely just go by Doku then. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, rather, oh. I'd rather have the 20 year old injured guy than the 30 year old injured guy yeah yeah i mean that makes sense you're not wrong I, I mean if i was to if i was to try and make a link up there i mean if i like i think what's his name um kubo i think he's called like take on so rare he'd yeah. probably make the most sense from a villarreal pov he's at least like relatively locked and he's a a younger and uh, i think more ankily stabled human being you know what name i'm happy we didn't uh we didn't get here laird uh and i thought we were going to get it at some point today but that we got like months ago and we were just like no alexander isaac oh i i thought someone was going to be like was going to bring up isaac like they brought up the one time during the elite u23 forward discussion we had the one time yeah, uh, that's like, the one was me we're just like no. That's the one was me. I did bring up Isaac, but that was before. Before that was I. I brought him up when um, when Wilson was sort of injured and not getting starts before Wilson came back fully fit. Isaac, I think, will never be good so long as Wilson yeah. is favoured as a striker and he has or- to play out wide. But if you put Isaac in the middle of two good wingers, I think he would he would score a lot of goals. The, the issue is, as a pure striker, you have to score 35 or more goals. Mm-hmm. Which, like... Yeah, that, that's yeah, the one you have to score. He's just never like, not enough. 
Yeah, I just realized, by the way, like, that this guy plays for Real Sociedad and not Villarreal. You have to get 30, 35 goals as a pure striker to get to like a 60 average. Like I'll, I'll use, we, we discussed Oshiman earlier. If I look at Victor Oshiman last season, and I'm just going to use Napoli. So if I used Victor Oshiman last season for Napoli, he scored 36 decisives. And he did not crack 60 if you include subs and stuff. If you remove out subs and you just have starts. So 30, 34 decisive or, or whatever, he was a 60 average player. So for like a guy like Isaac as a striker, like you need to basically be the, you need to be Harry Kane in the Premier League. Like that's what you need to do. And I, it's just not realistic for people. People will say names like that uh, frequently. Uh, Blue Tomatoes, no one, no one trusts, um, no one trusts Chelsea, I think at this point. Uh you you have to score so many goals. Like Harry Kane last season had 50 decisives. 50 decisives got him to, if I remove England out and I just use Spurs. So Harry Kane for Spurs last year was a uh, 36 decisive guy. He scored 30 goals. He got his average, His he was a 60 average player. That is just not where you necessarily want to be from the high end standpoint. You need to be higher than that. So you're talking like you need to put up 35 or so goals. Do you know how many guys are going to score 35 goals in the Prem each year? One, maybe. Yeah, Holland, Holland, and K. Well, it's not just the Prem. It's not just Prem. Go for any champ. Europe. Like Jonathan David would be the same, except for he was not very good last year. I don't see what people see in Jonathan David. I think he's absolutely <clears throat> garbage. Just as a footballer, yeah. I mean, I don't. I would, I'm not going to agree or disagree with that. I'm just from a from a perspective of him and starts last year. He was a 57 scorer in 36 starts, and he had a goal two out of every three games, and he had 27 decisives in 36 games. Like Jonathan David is the Teal Bunbury of the league. Gun. Is the what? The Teal Bunbury of the league. Gun. No, no, From no. watching this man in person, no, he is no. the tier. I, I like when I, I think you said tier I, one at first, and I was I like, did too. I thought a compliment. No, 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 no. He's the teal Bunbury of League Un. I, I remember watching um the PSG versus Lille game, like in the Parc de Prince, and it was a great game to watch. It was four three to PSG in the end. I could I, I couldn't count on both hands the amount of times Jonathan David just did not look like a footballer with the ball at his feet. He just that guy is just in gone fairness, that's his toughest matchup all season that you watched. Like away to PSG yeah, is probably P- the hardest. PSG game. were ass that game. They so they went one nil up and then conceded three in a row because they would they, like last season PSG may as well not have had a defense. I I think you could actually put me PSU, Nepenthes, and Chani at the back for PSG, and we probably concede less goals. Whoa, I'm a goalie. Thank you very much. All right, we'll put you in goal. Me, Chani, Nep, and Laird will be at the back, and and I think we concede less goals. Just, That's because yeah. I'm in net, obviously. You're in oh, right, because you're the... Yeah. Uh, I think Scosmo nails it here, though. We're getting drawn out of the budget. If you want elite, you can't have a right. forward, and if you want a forward, you can't have elite. But that goes... I want it respect. all. I you want, want all. all of it. And I want everything. He was discussing a lot of this discussion was about should he sacrifice his gallery and like a lot of his gallery to get because like getting from three to six is doable if you get rid of the Mike Mignon, Alex Merritt. You get rid of these cards, like yeah, you can get to six or seven. It's just a matter of uh should I do that or should I not do that? Scosmo brings up his boy Plie. So I thought I thought one that wouldn't like it's a bit of a punt, but if they don't re-sign Lukaku, I think uh, Turam. We've just gone to Inter. You think Jonathan David stinks? I think Turam stinks. I've always thought Turam's like so mediocre. I think, but it, the thing is, if you put Jonathan David into the Syria, all of a sudden, kind of don't think he's as bad because that league is so slow. Yeah, it's just goals. he'll be Vlahovic. No, because he's physical. You, or you like Ed and Jekko scores goals in the in this area. You know what I mean? Like we don't. I mean, to be fair, that team also was a Champions League finalist, so like they were quite a bit above most of the Serie. A. No, the, the whole thing is, I mean, with that is is we've talked about forwards. 
Uh, Joe Morley says, Teremy, if he gets a nice move, there's no way Teremy's on a team that's good enough. Uh, yeah, I don't no, think no he's, chance. He's not good enough to be on a team that would make him good. Uh, so here's the thing with forwards, and this is what I think people do struggle to realize. Scoring goals is not the only way to success on Sower. And I would argue if you only can score goals and not do anything else, it really hurts you on Sower. You have to have a A game or you just are, if you don't have an AA game, like if you do, if you are a pure striker, you have to lead the league in goals. You have to put up 35 goals or 30 to 35 goals. doesn't matter what league you're in. If you're not putting up 30, 35 goals, you're just not going to cut it uh, as in, in the situation. Uh, Cole Moani just brought up Cole Moani. If I look through his last uh, 50 games, he has cracked 81 times. No, sorry. Two times, two times. That's just not a car that's going to cut it in a champ rare pro lineup most of the time. So, yeah. So I think there's things you can do. I think there's depth. If you're going to go with a two to three ETH budget here, Scosman brings up a Demi. We've talked about a Demi before. He definitely doesn't cut it. Um, I don't rate that guy at all. Yeah, he just doesn't cut it. But like, if you are going to put in two to three ETH and you want elite level cards, you have to take a risk, right? Like you have to take a Daku risk or you have to not do much of that. You have to go elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. So I just think that there are midfield options that make more sense, defender options. I think there's, I think you could definitely get a defender option that makes sense. The reason Bayern didn't stick with defenders last year is because they all suck so bad. Whenever they played a game, they gave up three goals or two goals or something stupid happened. That's why they rotated so much. Like, I think Kim and Jay will help their defense a lot this year. He's really good. I agree. I think, I think Kim is the perfect Bayern Munich center back. He yeah. is, he is effectively a better right footed Lucas Hernandez, yeah. who was perfect for Bayern two years ago when Bayern were in that really dominant season. They just need someone that can hold the ball well, control it, and play a ball through a line. And that's what they, they've needed for a while. Yeah. So I think that I think Bayern could end up being more stable defensively if some things shake out. Like if they did dump Davies, if Davies left, Rafa Guerrero is a really damn good card. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, I think that's a big if though, because I mean, realistically, Davies is a real. Davies still what 23, 24 years old. Who buys Davies? They're gonna need like, every like they're gonna demand a lot of money for Alfonso Davies, right? Like he is still the even his name Madrid. holds a lot of weight. Yeah, I mean, the only place he's going is Madrid. Like, I don't think he goes to, I don't think he goes anywhere but Madrid. True. I think, I think the only Can they thing afford that, him? the hesitancy on Guerrero is that he probably doesn't get any set pieces at Bayern. And he Probably. has a lot of them at Dortmund. Probably not, but I don't think he needs them. We've seen Pavard with no set pieces be really good. We've seen... I'm just saying, uh, he's a different player than Pavard. Yeah. Just, no, but he's, he is very, very, very similar to Cancelo. And we saw Cancelo be really good at, at Bayern last year. Like, Guerrero plays a similar approach to what he yeah. does. If you look at... If we look at starts for Bayern for Cancelo... Cancelo was like a 60 average player with um, he with quite a few decisives. He had five decisives in 13 starts. But he did, he did have some not great games too. Like yeah, but, I was gonna say, I, I wouldn't say he was great at Bayern. I mean, I'm not sitting there against. I'm not sitting there. You know, he was great against. He was great at Bayern. Like here's the thing, right? I'm not sitting there and being like, oh man, City's on the schedule, baby. I'm expecting a good game. It's like no, that's right on. Move it on. And like he had. He, some of the some of the games for Cancelo were Man City and PSG. Like those are not great matchups. But like you in the, in the matchups you would expect Cancelo to have been good in, he was pretty decent some of the time. His minutes also sucked. Cause, <laughs> pretty but, decent some of the time sounds fantastic to me. No, I mean, he had some spikes. He had a 96 and 85, 87 in 13 games. He had 22 percent of the time was above 85. Uh. 22%. He was over 85 three times. Three times. Three, three of 13. Three of 13. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. As long as we have a good sample size. Yeah. Thanks. Very large. Z Zicky Zaki made a point there about Guerrero that I've heard from a couple of people, and apparently he's more suited to midfield. I think with Bayern, you want, I think you want a defender from Bayern because just how dominant they are and how much they hold possession high up the pitch. Like, for example, I'm looking at that 85 without a decisive from Cancelo. 14.4 points from 36 accurate final third passes. Yeah. Like you want, that's what you want. And that's why yeah. I think Kim Min Jae will, will absolutely bang because he, he'll do what Lucas Nandes did where he kind of pushed up into that pocket of space 
on on the right hand side rather than the yeah. left and get so many like long balls into the opposition accurate final third passes um and that's kind of what you want and i don't think i don't think davies gets that because davies is a kind of player that he will take the ball take someone on and like yeah. play across but lose the ball so much and fullbacks get absolutely crucified for that um but i think i think guerrero if he gets played at left back or, le- or left wing back for example I feel like he just does the same thing where it's constant crosses and constant balls in the box but just lose possession and isn't going to have that same effect. He won't cross like what Davies does. He's going to play a different game where he makes a lot more passes to set himself up to, to get the ball. Wow. Very, very. See, as you see, he, he Cooper agreed. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's it's he, he's going to play a different game than what, than what Davies plays. But yeah, I don't know. The thing is, we have no idea what Davies is going to do yet. We don't know if Davies is going to be at Bayern. We don't know if they're going to move him up the field a bit more, play more left wing. We don't know if they're going to sell him to, to Madrid. Here's the thing. I don't really see Davies going to Madrid until Mbappe is sorted. So, like, I don't know. I don't think it's realistic that Davies is, is at Madrid super soon. But I don't, that's my opinion on it. Yeah, so Luis yeah. Mena said, Guerrero's defenders. Defenders, bread and butter is those final third passes where you just play little quick passes back and forth with each other in the final third. That's what Guerrero is going to do. Whereas they get like what, point six per pass. Like, it's, yeah, it's huge. It's, it's crazy. It, if you sit there and you make like three passes at the edge of the box into the box, that's like three points. Like yeah. you do that like five times during the game, you're at like 50 and you've done nothing. So it's just like, those are like bread and butter type plays that are, that are huge. That right there is exactly why um, Grimaldo was so good at Benfica. Correct. Someone asked me today if they th- if if I think he'll get even closer. I honestly see Grimaldo being a fifty average player next year. Um, he should be okay. He'll still have spike games when they're the, a bit a better team. The issue is is that I don't think they're going to be near as good as obviously what you're at with Benfica. But like you still are going to have moments where they play a bottom tier team where he'll be a pretty good player. Yeah, I yeah, I just wonder. I I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll be. I'll be shocked if he gets more than two one hundreds next year, at, at Leverkusen. And I think that because I I do think there'll be spikes, but not in the. I think they'll look. The spikes will look like bigger spikes because of how many more of those forty points he's going to have. Yeah. Because the amount of times I'd watch Benfica and Grimaldo was just sat genuinely on the edge of the box doing like at the edge of the opponent's box as well doing nothing but getting the ball and passing it off to midfield like to florentina luis or enzo getting the ball back passing it to someone in the box and getting a point point six and a point five for the penalty area entry in the final third part and it's like i just think i don't think you'll get anywhere close to that next year yeah i buy all that that's it's, it's tough yeah and people complain about saudi you know Leverkusen, man. Hoffman, same. Hoffman's they buy a Hoffman. I don't think Hoffman will get those scores. Like, honestly, I, I think I think Xabi Alonso has got a got a really strong Challenger Europe gallery, and I think that he's going to be getting a few more Challenger Europe players out of there on purpose to Leverkusen, so he can win that division because he's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Xavier Alonso, if you're watching, I didn't mean that. And and to traders as well, um, I didn't mean to call you blood sucking leeches earlier. It was a joke, just for the effects of the stream. And um, I will happily give you thirty percent over. I'm actually going to name my firstborn Pavel as well. Um, I did tell him that today. He was ignoring my offers because I called him pay well trader or doesn't pay well trader in a video, and like he's ignoring all my offers. Um. So I messaged him today and said, I will call my firstborn Pavel and he accepts one of my offers like straight away. So, you know, it's a legally binding agreement now. Good luck with that. <clears throat> Thank you to everybody for joining us. If you could please like and subscribe, go over to It's Haber So Rare on YouTube and Twitter. Subscribe there. Some good original content over there. Always good stuff. Haber, I noticed that you streamed live today. Is that a regular plan now? Yes, I would like to be streaming a lot more because I'll tell you what I do. This is my daily routine, right? Wake up, gym, exercise, will like look at what I need to do to prep, prep, prepare for the FIFA stream and the FIFA content later. And then I will sit there for like two or three hours, 
with either a TV show or a movie on, right? And I will play like League of Legends or something. And I will just have Sarah data open, looking at different things, have Sarah open, trying to do offers and stuff like that for like three hours. And I was like, why wouldn't I stream that? As may as well. So yeah, I think that'll be a regular occurrence. Awesome. Awesome. So everyone check that out. Throw on your notifications for it's it's Haber Silver. And uh, yeah, Haber, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like we talked a lot about a lot, but we didn't. Oh, we did. Anything. We covered nothing. I so, feel yeah. like. We'll have to do it again, but we will. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much, Haber, and um, everyone else. Good luck this week.